so many AI startups seem to be just focused on the tech. Mm. Um, how, how, how many subnets, how many businesses within BitTensor have moved into that revenue stage or are about to? Because that's where the real value is, surely. Yeah, I guess like with anything, um, I, I visually imagine BitTensor as this deserted island, in, or a brand new island that just popped up in the ocean and it's got no infrastructure. So if you want to you know, turn this into modern civilization, you need infrastructure. So naturally, everyone has, has come to this AI island and they're, they're building hardcore AI infrastructure, you know, pre-training, post-training, all that sort of stuff. Um, and, and once the, you know, the, the, the roads, the pipe work, the fiber optics are all laid in, then you can have, let's say, phase two, which is where um, the intelligence layer comes in. So you have all of these AI capabilities, then you can get inference from that, i.e. the intelligence. Um, so, you know, take SCORE, for example, Subnet 44, they have computer vision. They're putting in the hard work to get computer vision really good, but then w once they've, they've done that, they can then take any form of video and get intelligence from that, whether it's on the football pitch to CCTV in, in London, and they can, you know, eventually, there's no reason why they couldn't f forecast or predict crime. Um, and then the phase three is where I think the retail layer comes in, where you have all of this hardcore infra, the intelligence that comes from the infra, and then you can use the intelligence to create businesses. Now, yes, there have been some subnets that have just gone from you know one, two, and they're, they're already at three, uh, but they're all moving at different paces, and, and revenue is coming in thick and fast. Um, we've all had like eight months of incubation, and now there's some subnets doing, you know, one that's doing about six hundred dollars per hour, twenty four seven. Um, you know, we've spoke to some subnets. You know, Targon. They, they said they're doing about three and a half thousand dollars a day. Um, you know, and, and at the moment, most of the subnets are doing fifty to a hundred thousand dollars per month. Uh, the revenue generating ones that we've spoken to in Revenue Search. Yeah. Well, what are your thoughts? Um, well, it all comes down to revenue in the end. 100%. So in the real world. If I wanted to launch a startup, I'd go to San Francisco. I'd say I've got these two PhD students. <laughs> like we, we want to, the three of us are going to build this fantastic business, and I'm going to go and do a seed round, and I'm going to bank a few million dollars for that, and then I'm going to do a, a fancy deck, and I'm going to yeah, get yeah. some get some <laughs> beta testing going on, and then I'm going to go and do another bigger raise, um, and, and I'm probably going to be on my third or fourth raise while I'm still pre-revenue. Hmm. And the thing with BitTensor is that that allows subnets to use the emissions that they get to instead of taking that VC money. So they're able to, to fund their operating expenses and to pay for some of the, the, the brightest minds in the world to come and work on those subnets through the minor mechanism, um, but w without taking a, a big chunk of dirty VC money. But ultimately, what the VCs want and anybody that's buying a subnet's alpha token one is they want to see some value returned to them. Mm. And that's where the revenue becomes absolutely key and where in the short term, the, the most important thing for subnets to do is communication. And the thing that people want to hear about is how focused they are on revenue and when it's going to come. Yeah, it's, it's, bullsh it's a bullshit compression vehicle. So... If you like in your example, and you're, you're having to do the pony show and try and get investors and do all some all sorts of speeches, to, you know, it that's months, if not years, to get your your fledgling startup to you know monetize and then so you can start building. Whereas you can just launch a subnet and 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 be incubated straight away. Um, and oh, there was one other point, but yeah. we'll never know what it was we'll never know but what I it was. I'm going to take a slight aside here because I did think I thought of a new way of positioning something the other day which I might just try and position here while we're recording it because it's kind of revenue search related I haven't yeah. captured it anywhere else but I'll just run it past you <laughs> so um, so we, we, we've said to people because it's true that we've changed the way that we look at the subnets that we want to invest in mm. um, because when we started doing that the end of February and March and April, we, we were looking at them in a way that most people couldn't. Yeah. And, and it was, it's interesting, and it feeds into revenue search, but the, 
the, the, art, the, the, the problem was that you and I were having conversations with subnets, finding out information that only we were privy to. Mm. And they weren't doing a very good job of communicating that to everybody else. So we were buying tokens that uh, subnet alpha that, that we knew was good. Yeah. In really strong projects led by really strong teams. Information asymmetry. Yeah. We, we had the asymmetry because we had the information, but nobody else did. So they didn't know about why, they didn't understand why we'd bought them. Mm. And we did an announcement. What really changed is when we invited other people to have front row seats at those conversations. <laughs> so when, when we said, okay, right, we're going to continue to have our conversations with subnet owners, but instead of it just being me, you, and them on a Zoom, we're going to press the live stream button, yeah. and now a thousand or two thousand people can watch along with us and and understand why we are investing in those subnets, or at least why those subnets are investable, or make their own decisions about why they're not. Yeah. There's less information asymmetry, mm. so you could say, and we've seen this on a couple of occasions, that we have less of an advantage. There've oh, been yeah? a couple of times that we've got to the end of a revenue search. Oh, shit. <laughs> and, the, and the price action is, has been one way only, and we've and the reason is obvious. And we're like that, guys. That was a really good revenue search. Yeah. We'd like to buy some of your subnet, and and suddenly it's 40, 50, 80 percent higher than it was when we yep. started. But that's that's what's happened. That's that. We, we've lost <clears> the asymmetry. <throat> For the, for the for the good of the ecosystem. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy for that. Yeah, I'm happy. For I, that. I I actually love it when we we discover a new gem. We have zero exposure, and you know the the the, the community can effectively front front run us. We do um, front run. So it, I mean, ultimately, it doesn't really affect us too much. Uh, um, but the yeah, the, going back to the revenue thing, there, there's this this fine balance between let's say the bit tensor purists and let's say, the, the, the realist. So the purist, you know, the, the word revenue is a bit of a disgusting sort of word, like, oh, don't talk to me about revenue, I'm building, you know, the, the world's best distributed pre-training or, or, or whatever it may be. Um, but unfortunately, when we saw the birth of the internet, it was drugs, porn and gambling that really got the, the internet up and running is, uh, and revenue generating businesses. Um, so, uh, it will be the same with BitTensor and AI. I think it will. It, it will. It, it needs revenue fate or revenue focused businesses and retail minded apps. We haven't had that killer ChatGPT moment for BitTensor. Uh, I know that DeepSeek launched and disrupted OpenAI for a bit, and it launched primarily through BitTensor. But it wasn't our sort of yeah ChatGPT moment. But it's coming. It really is.